This is Amelia Pliwa, and you're watching The Buzz. Students, we will begin registering for the 2023-2024 school year on Tuesday, November 1st. To prepare for registration, you may pick up a course selection sheet in the Counseling Office or Counselor Express Station. We will conduct the elective lunchtime showcase in the West Commons hallway during lunch periods Wednesday through Friday of this week. This will be your only opportunity to explore your elective options before registration begins. Contact your counselor or go to the counselor's website for more information. Don't miss this. Seniors, make sure to stop by the Counselor Express in the Commons this week to get help with your college applications. Girls basketball practice starts Monday, October 31st after school in the Fieldhouse. There are no cuts for girls basketball. Please see Coach Bombales, Coach Stewart, Coach Rife, Coach Betts for any questions. Congratulations to Zania Salas who are qualifying in sectionals in cross country. Good luck this Saturday at Lake Park. Coming up, another Buzz interview. Stay with us. Model UN stimulates a United Nations committee and debates real global issues in an attempt to create a resolution to the problem. Student delegates are expected to submit position papers before a committee. These are a combination of summarizing their assigned country positions on the topic, including history and prior actions taken, as well as proposed solutions to the problem. Awards are given to each committee for the best position paper submitted by a delegate. Congratulations to Isabella Peñalosa for winning the best position paper on Saturday at the Vabouncy Valley Model UN Conference. The culinary arts program is beneficial for students that like to cook or want to own their own restaurant. So we're excited to have Mrs. Amy Schubert from our all very own culinary arts program. Thank you so much for stopping to talk to the buzz. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. So, first of all, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I have been working at Elgin High School for the past seven years as a substitute teacher as well as a long-term sub. My daughter graduated from here. I live in the neighborhood. And I have recently retired from the restaurant business and decided to teach it. That's amazing. Where did you learn to cook? I've worked in restaurants since I was 18, so I've done everything from serving to bartending to, to cooking in the kitchen and busing tables. So I've just learned hands-on instead of in a school environment. Speaking of cooking in the kitchen, what is your signature dish? My signature dish, personally, is I make a great baked mastacholi. It's an Italian dish that was passed down from my grandmother, and it's one of my favorites to make. Wow, that's amazing. Who's your favorite TV chef? Chef Gordon Ramsay, of course. Right now we're watching Hell's Kitchen, and I love Master Chef as well. And I was just in Las Vegas not too long ago, and I got to actually see the Hell's Kitchen. So that was pretty cool. What was that like? It was pretty surreal, um, but it didn't, you know, it's a lot smaller than it looks on TV. So you always see it on TV and it looks all grand, but when you get there in person, it makes it a little more personal. So I didn't get to see Chef Ramsay, of course, but I got to see at least the building. So it was really nice. So would you say he's your biggest inspiration? Um, no, I would not. Actually, one of my biggest inspirations is Dave Perlick. He's a local chef that I worked with for a very long time. He's an ECC graduate and um, he owns his own restaurant now and I worked for him for a little while and he is very passionate about what he does and I've seen the way he works with the people in the community and that's something that I hope to help others aspire to do. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, do you have a favorite restaurant by any chance? Uh, it would be his restaurant. I love um, his restaurants in Barrington and I also used to work at Montero Grill in Algonquin so I like that restaurant as well. What's his cuisine? It's American inspired dishes. It's steaks and seafood and some homemade dishes, risotto, um, pretty much whatever's relevant and up to date what's happening in the culinary world right now. Okay, so I think we're all kind of curious about this. What are the do's and don'ts when ordering in a restaurant? The do's and don'ts in ordering a restaurant. Um, I would say unless it has 
a specific allergy to your body like we don't need to know that you're not eating dairy just don't order something with dairy in it um, so as a server or an ex server um, that's very relevant you know you want to order what's on the menu the best that you can try not to deviate too much um, and then I always ask my server for recommendations because they want to talk to you and they want to tell you their opinion so you can always ask them I still do do it to this day ask when I go to a restaurant what should I get what is your favorite and that gives me some better options to choose from thank you is it true a good indication of a clean restaurant is its restroom I always say that I even taught that to the students the first week I said you can always know a good restaurant that their kitchen's gonna be clean because if they let you see the bathroom then they don't let you see the kitchen then you're just gonna trust that the kitchens clean as well all right can you show us around your the culinary classroom Sure. Could you tell us a little bit about the culinary program here at EHS? Sure. Uh, this is where you start off in levels one or two, and that can be taken at any grade. It just is level one and level two. So we have classroom work on this side, and this is where we would do our labs, we like to call them. Learn what, cook what you've learned during the week. And then, so every, we split the kids up into the students up into teams of four and we have a head chef a sous chef which is a helper someone that's is responsible for measuring ingredients and then another person that's responsible for of course um, washing and drying the dishes and then they're responsible to clean their station at each time and then when you get into levels three and four we have all kinds of state-of-the-art while we're walking through we have all kinds of state-of-the-art um, Mixers, these cabinets are full with everything you could possibly need for baking and cooking. We will be making our own pasta. We've already made quiche from scratch. The students know how to make homemade waffles, and that's just at level two. So then when you go to level three and four, you're gonna go into the bigger kitchen, which is a real restaurant kitchen. So you're learning catering from a real restaurant. And so these are a little bit more high-end restaurant kitchen stations here and then over here we have we're getting ready to make some things some pies next week but we have full-on restaurant that you would find in any um, kitchen back of the house we like to call it in the restaurant business so speaking of the kitchen is there more cooking or baking in this program um, probably more cooking um, in the lower levels we do baking first because level one, it's easier to bake cookies than it is to like cook because it has, when you bake, it's more of a science. When you cook, there can be some flexibility with seasonings and stuff. Um, and so when you get into levels three and four is when you start really cooking and then selling your cooking to the teachers um, for lunches. So I'm curious, approximately how many students are in this program? Um, I believe right now we have over 600 students in the program. It's one of the largest and we had to turn away over a hundred students so people want to learn how to cook and we want it's a lifelong skill that we want to teach these students at Elgin High School so what's in that room over there well I can show you this is our dry storage in the restaurant business we call it dry storage but it's locked right now because Miss Atchison's away today and she has the keys and then also I would love to show you our walk-in cooler this is just like you would find in a restaurant, same thing. She has the keys. We leave everything locked so nobody goes in there and helps themselves while we're not in class. But we keep all of our cold storage in there as well. And then this is the line where we have some products that we've been working on this week. And this is all of the dishes when we have our little restaurant pop up for the teachers and the steam tables where we can hold hot food when we get ready to serve the teachers their lunches. What kind of lunches would you make for the teachers? So far this year they've made soup, they've made masticcioli, we've made cinnamon rolls, I believe in years past we've had a taco bar, a baked potato bar, maybe a chili bar, so when the colder months come we'll be doing some things like that. Aside from the kitchen itself, is there an actual classroom? There is. All level three and four, they cook in both of these kitchens and then this is the classroom that they learn in. So we use the books that we have as well as some videos and this is where they make. You can see 
they're planning out their restaurant class right there on the board. Right. We do take quite a bit of field trips as well. You mentioned earlier field trips. What kind of field trips? We are taking some field trips to see where the food is um, produced as well as how it, it goes through the chain to get to us. We are also taking a tour of downtown Chicago and a pizza tour. So we are going to go on tasting all different kinds of pizzas and learning the origin of pizza, as well as a cupcake making tour. So that will be the baking portion. We will learn all about um, mass produce, production of cupcakes, and then we'll get to top some as well. That's amazing. And first of all, delicious. Okay. <laughs> but I have another question. So there's always like top chefs, but in terms of the classroom, are there any competitions that students can engage in? Um, the culinary students do have a competition where the teachers come and do judging. So right now I believe there's a burger judging going to be going on. And then I'm not quite sure what we have in store for the future. So you're going to have to tune in to, to check that out. What about the competition where students went to New York? I heard they won some awards. Could you tell me a little bit about it? Yes. Um, we're hoping to get back to some fun activities like that now that we're post-pandemic, right? So things are a little getting back to normal. So those students, they would comp compete just like an, an athlete would compete at a regional and a sectional and then a national level. So that's something that we can look forward to getting back into our rotation as well as possibly a cooking club or something along those lines. A cooking club? That sounds incredible. What are some of the goals with that cooking club? Uh, well, that was just an idea I had this year. I would Going forward, I was thinking maybe we could cook something that you don't normally would cook in class and learn skills that we don't have time to teach because we can't teach everything in the classroom. And maybe once a month, depending on what kind of budget or fundraising we would be able to do. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we end this interview? Yes, I just would like to say that the cooking teachers that I work with, they love their job and they love when students come to class and participate in their classrooms. And it's not always as easy as the students think, but they always learn and they're always growing in our classrooms because they are getting challenged to do things out of their comfort zone. So that's why we love it so much and we put in a ton of work and just like all the other teachers do, so we just have the best interests of the students at heart. Mrs. Schubert, thank you so much for joining us this, uh, this afternoon to talk about the culinary program. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. As you heard earlier, registration for the 2023-2024 school year begins Tuesday, November 1st. So start thinking about your electives. We all have to eat. So, the culinary pro arts program is a great selection. Room Buzz Weekly is Elgin High School's news team. If you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe. That's all for this week. Come back next week for Elgin High School's Maroon Buzz Weekly.